My name's Patrick Lamontang, and I paint funny looking animals. Every artist seems to be looking for their niche, that elusive personal style that others will just know as your work. Trying to find it can be as simple as throwing as many things at a wall as you can and paying attention to what sticks. I've thrown a lot of stuff at a lot of walls. In my short career, I've been a very bad web designer, a poor graphic designer, a barely passable animator, decent illustrator, pretty good cartoonist, and a very good painter. These days I work full-time as an editorial cartoonist, illustrator, and digital painter. Not a bad way to make a thankfully good living. Very early mornings, long days, and sometimes late nights, but I certainly can't complain that I get to draw in color all day. It's actually my job, which I know seems ridiculous to a lot of people. A few years ago, I got it into my head to paint a grizzly bear. Initially, it was going to be a simple portrait-style illustration, but before too long, it became this amused-looking critter with a cocked eyebrow and sideways grin, and I had more fun with that painting than any I'd done before. More animals followed, people seemed to like them, I started having them professionally printed, galleries were hanging and selling them, a couple of awards, one licensing deal, then another, and another, and people started asking me to paint their pets in my style. Funny when you consider that I didn't even know I had a style, and suddenly, I'd found my niche. There will always be people to tell you what you should be doing with your art, in addition to those failed creative professions I mentioned, those efforts to be something I'm not, I've been told that I should be illustrating children's books, creating comic strips, working on animated movies, designing characters for cartoons, illustrating for magazines, teaching more, and of course, painting more realistic animals, instead of these characters I've been ending up with. When you're still looking for your niche, all of those suggestions will fill you with doubt, and you might consider that you don't know what you're doing at all. When you find it, however, those suggestions become a lot easier to ignore. Incidentally, I asked one of my gallery managers his opinion on my painting more realistic animals. He told me that had I originally approached them with that, they wouldn't have been interested, because that's what everybody else is doing. So after all of the things I've tried and done to find my niche over the years, it turns out that the meandering rocky road was leading me to painting these whimsical critters I love so much. On a recent Friday night, after a long week of deadlines and work, squeezing in painting time wherever I could, I was actually looking forward to getting up at 5 a.m. the next morning to put in the final few hours on this painting. Give me a Saturday morning, a hot cup of coffee, some music in my headphones, no distractions, and time to paint, and I'm truly happy. There's a moment in every painting where the personality just seems to show up. It always catches me off guard, never fails to make me smile, and I've often found myself letting out a laugh and even saying out loud, there you are. Those moments make all of the uncertainty and frustration that came before it worth it because when that happens, there's no doubt that I'm right where I'm supposed to be in that moment. And it's a wonderful feeling. Funny looking animals. Who knew? It's a man.